application is approved, it's looking for performance, the performance typically goes up. Other ways are uh, online, what we call IBTs, internet-based uh, uh, internet, uh, training. Uh, so if they have a combination of a number of, of didactic modalities, one is input from group training, individual coaching, uh, peer uh, 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 consultation, buddies, putting buddies together in organizations, and another aspect is, is to give them the opportunity to strengthen their weaker areas online. Uh, and then follow-ups, and then there's all ver there's variations of one-to-one of -one coaching. It can also be followed up, not just face-to-face, -face, later by, by telephone or emails or continuation of this. So I, I think the, the best results that one typically gets on improving emotional intelligence and thereby performance is mixing modalities. Okay. Not just based it on one, based on a number of input. Some people learn better by themselves or in groups. Or some people prefer not on a based uh, a one-to-one -one, uh, approach, but to, uh, to, to to in a group approach. So this is uh, okay. And I'm I'm hopefully you're okay with this. I'm going to throw in a question sure. based on some some things. But what I heard you say was that emotional intelligence practitioners had to be responsible and ethical, yes. and have the experience to be able to do the training and to work with emotional intelligence. And I think that um, it speaks to your ethics and it speaks to your passion in the field and your legacy. Yes, Can I, I add you, have you add to that? Yes, I, I think so. It's very important. Um, it's a very delicate thing working with other human beings. And if we're working in an area of emotional intelligence, for example, if I'm a, uh, an EI practitioner, working with other people, testing, coaching, training. I, first of all, I think I have to be a role model. Right. I think it would be good if I was really emotionally, socially intelligent and morally competent. Uh, dealing with this not as a money maker, I'm going to be out there and, and make a fortune on this thing uh, called emotional intelligence. It's not as if I'm, I'm selling cars or uh, a television sets or whatever. I'm working with, with a very delicate thing which is a human being, and um, so it's the way I think I have to uh, provide a positive role model of emotional social intelligence, that I'm aware of my emotions, I'm aware of emotions of other people, I can convey myself in a constructive manner, not a destructive manner, uh, I'm adaptive, uh, I'm self-motivated, so I think this, this role model is also didactic for people that I'm coaching. Uh, I'm coaching them on emotional intelligence, so as an EI practitioner, I should know the topic very well. What is emotional intelligence? I, I, right. Some people working in the area, uh, I've, I've spoken with, with a number of people over the years, some know the topic very well. Some are very good coaches and trainers, and other people, when you question them about emotional intelligence, it, the area becomes a bit foggy. So I think that, so I if I could wave this magic wand and say, who would I like as, as EI practitioners, people who provide a good role, role model in themselves, that know the area very well in which they're working? How can I train someone or coach them if I, I do not know the, the area well? So you have to read, you have to go to conferences, you have to speak with other people, you have to have mentors. Um, and, and then I, I, another thing I, I, I think is very, very important is I think you have to have a, a, just a pleasant personality in dealing with people. This is important. If I was just very pessimistic or um, uh, um, aggressive with other people, this is not, this is not the, the way of being a good teacher, instructor, trainer, coach. Um, so this, is, this combination of areas are extremely important. And, and uh, I think we do better work when we combine all this together. The knowledge, the role model, the pleasant personality, uh, the understanding of other people, and, and working with people who are strong in emotional intelligence is easy. There's not too much to work. I think the challenge is when we see low scores on, on EI tests, and how do you work with that? that, that that's the difficulty. Right. So this is especially uh, w where this comes into play. Okay. And what do you see as the greatest application of your work? What has given you the greatest satisfaction? Um, I, I would say 
most of my work is, is focused now and has been focused on applying emotional intelligence in the workplace. But my passion is if this is such a, um, it can be such an important component of um, a driver of, of performance, why not start, not with Alice, start with, in education and, and uh, 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 applying this in the educational setting. And even before that, in parenting. And even before that, why not in couple counseling? Beautiful. And so, so you go back to couple counseling or working with couples who anticipate having children and, and try to enhance areas that you think are important in emotional intelligence that impact performance in life, adaptability and, and, and our performance in life, success in life. And you, then you take these areas with an educational, so it's like going from home to school, and in school from a very early age, and I think it has to be multi-year, you have to, it's not just going in at the third grade with a program in emotional intelligence, this has to be a continuation of, of home, starting from, from preschool, and all the way up, and at, it has to be age specific, uh, for children who are five years old, six, seven, eight, 12, 13, all the way up. And to focus on what we think are the key components in emotional intelligence, the, the big drivers of, of performance and getting along with people, um, and, and to work on that. And so I think, I think my passion is, or I think that the, 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 the most important application of not just my work or my model, the other models in emotional intelligence, would be uh, in parenting and education at okay. home and in school. For just preparing, preparing children to after the age of 18 uh, to be more comfortable with themselves, comfortable with others, uh, being able to adapt and, and to um, uh, run their lives in a way that uh, uh, creates contentment and, and satisfaction uh, for, for them and for other people that need. They come in contact. Okay. And, and lastly, I, I told you a little bit, I'm doing some research and, and I'd love your opinion on work that I'm doing in emotions and trust. And so I, I know that you had said earlier, it's not an area that you're, you're doing a lot of work in, but you're, you're one of the most well-regarded people in emotional intelligence. I'd love to have just your opinion on how you see emotions and trust working together. I, I think, um, uh, uh, first of all, to, to give you uh, an honest answer, I would, you're right, I, I, I haven't thought about that a lot. I'd have to think about that and get back to you. Okay. But I think right now, I, I can see there is a nexus, there is a connection between that. And it, it just, as you asked me the question right now, I think it's somehow related to trust. Trust is, I think, a way of, of sharing emotions, expressing and sharing. I express emotions and there's human beings on the other side that are seeing this. They're expressed towards other people. And it's a way of, there's a communication between the one who is broadcasting the emotions, conveying the emotions, and the person who is trying to read these emotions. So there's, there's a, a, a basic human communication between emotional expression and emotional recognition and I think the sharing of, of, of very intimate emotions um, is, is probably has to do something with trust uh, I, I will express emotions to you if I feel I can trust you mm -hmm. and that you won't use these emotions to harm me but to understand and relate with me so I think it's like it's something that I that people broadcast and other people accept. I think it's easier to do that when there's basic trust. If I don't trust you, I'll be uh, more conscious about what I'll express to you. If I do trust you, then I'll share more with you and you'll be able to accept more from me. So I, th I, th I think, I have this feeling, I have to check it out, that, that I have to, to, to think about it more, that that here might be something to do basically with, with, with human trust. You're trusting me with something. I'm trusting you with something. Right. And something very intimate as emotions, or some emotions. So I think that that might be some basis of, of what you might be 
It's a good direction for me to go and do some more research. It was an absolute pleasure talking with you, and I look forward to more opportunities to meet you and talk to you at future conferences and just be able to learn from you. Thank you so much.